Well, welcome back to what I don't want to call a project boat because it's not it's not a project, but it's certainly it's a, a midlife refresh. Now, I, I was going to do a series of videos and I may well do that still. One of them was going to be about repairing the floor because we had a rotten floor, um, but I can't remember how much of video I've actually shot of that. Very quickly, here is the floor. And it's all new, look, oh, new fiberglass, new plywood, so the floor is done, so that's good. So, moving on. Before we put the interior back in, what I wanted to do was address some issues with the engine. The engine runs, it's a good engine. Uh, Mercury is a three litre. Now, as is very common with many of these engines, it's suffering a fair amount from some sort of surface to moderate corrosion in places. This, uh, it's an iron block, it's iron, it's cast iron, and we get in salt water. Well, whose idea was that? Anyway, on these engines, frequently, commonly, down on this side, the right-hand side, the starter motor would be down there, um, you have this corrosion. Frequently, many of these engines suffer from this. So this will all be dressed, um, cleaned up with a wire brush, and then we'll add some of the, um, the rust converter, the uh, Cura stuff, and then uh, a little a little lick of paint to mainly to keep the corrosion at bay, but also um, to make it look pretty. However, whilst mucking around with my wire brush yesterday, here is the dippy sticky that I'm pretty sure should be attached to the block. I'm pretty sure, focusy, 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 that is not supposed to be rusted through there. So what I'm going to try and do today is we're going to try and remove the remains of that which is stuck in the block. Um, a common method, which we may resort to, but I really don't want to, is to take off the oil pan, drop the oil pan, and then we can actually, we can tap up the remains from underneath. But getting the oil pan off on this boat is going to be really awkward don't think I'm going to have to remove the engine but there is a possibility and on many boats you probably would have to pull the engine to. So we're going to try and avoid doing that. Um, there's a couple of things that we're going to try. So first of all here is the new one. Oh, nice new one from Mer Cruiser. And uh, what has happened is it is snapped around about uh, just about there I think is where it snapped. So we've got a fair amount still sticking at the top. Maybe a bit further up. Anyway. Um, what I've got to try and excuse a hand. What I've, got to, what, I've to, what I've got to try and do is remove um, that which is left in the block. And there's a couple of common tools that I'm going to try. The first thing I'm doing then is I'm just using a little hooky picky thing and I'm trying to clean up around the base here because what I want to try and do is remove as much rust here because I'm going to use some penetrating oil just to try and get down the sides between the dipstick and the block itself. Now, those of you who know me know I am not the greatest fan of penetrating oil. It is not the amazing thing that everyone thinks it is. <clears throat> everyone thinks you can just squirt a load of it onto an M36 bolt that's rusted and it'll magically take itself apart by the breeze of the wind. Good luck. But in this instance, if we can get a bit of penetrating oil down between the um, side of the dipstick and the block, because it's going to be horribly rusty in there, if we get any movement at all, it's going to really help to lube that up. Um, so I'm going to spray some penetrating oil. What I'm going to do, because I don't want to get anything in here, we're just going to put a little bit. This is impossible with one hand with the camera. I might have to do this off camera, but the idea is I'm going to put um, put a bit of paper in there to stop anything from dropping in there. Now, when I was cleaning up above, I had some paper in there because I don't want any rust falling down into the sump. Thank you very much, because even if you do an oil change afterwards, this, you know, you're going to have little bits of rust sitting in the bottom of the sump. So we can do everything we can to stop anything going in there. So paper go in there, give it a squirt. So plan number one is this. This is the um, the new dipstick, but obviously it's the same dimensions as the old dipstick. I have found out by sheer coincidence, by mucking around, that this is an M8 standard tap. That goes in there quite nicely and bites. So what we can do is we can cut an M8 thread into the top, 
in fact, it, it will be here, but that is the same dimension all the way down until it changes here. That waste is where it bottoms out in the block. So we've got this much left in the block, at least a bit more, maybe. So we're going to tap. It's going to be here, but with uh, with my nice M8 tap, and then I'm going to screw in an M8 adapter that way, and then we're going to use the old donk donk slide hammer. This is only a little tiny slide hammer. You can see by comparison to the um, to the dipstick because there's so much corrosion in there. Um, I think we should be able to cut the thread okay, but once we've got the um, adapter in and we're banging on it, there's a good chance we'll pull it loose. So we're going to be very, very gentle. The other thing I'm going to do, well, somewhere I've got a hammer, and whilst tapping up with the other hand, I don't know how I'm going to film this, I need three hands. Um, I'm going to tap the side of the block right where it goes in because it's a cast iron block so we, we might be able to get just a little bit of motion on the block um, whilst banging up on the um, on the slide hammer and that might just be enough to free it off and get it out. That is plan A. Like a good boy I've gone actually down the, the whole set of taps so we started with a taper tap, went down to an intermediate um, and this one now is just the plug tap and it's going in rather nicely now so I'm just going to take that all the way down as far as I can it's a nice deep thread the deeper the better really because we want lots to grip onto so that's the tap all the way down it strikes me that somebody is going to mention the fact that although I had some paper in there earlier when I was um, knocking the rust and scraping the rust back of course I've just tapped into a hole so there's going to be some little metal shavings drop down the dipstick you know what there is huh, there's not a huge amount I can do about that I'll be brutally honest it is going to have an oil change straight away before we go I can only do what I can do so I hope you can see if the camera catches that there is now a nice thread there's a bit of ignition wire get out of the way a nice thread cut into good look at the state of all that what remains so what I'm going to do I'm going to put another bit of paper down there um, and I am going to scrape around the edge again and do some more um, loose juice some more penetrating oil and let that sit for a bit longer patience I think is the key and then when we come to remove it as I say I'll try and strike on the side here with a hammer possibly hammer and drift I haven't got enough hands for this just to try and flex this it's not a huge bit of um, casting here see if we can get a bit of flex on it I don't want to break it so I won't be hitting it hard the thing that's a real shame the, the the absolute best thing would be to get some heat on here some map gas or even some oxy but this is a fuel pump and that is a fuel line uh, an open fuel line. Now I could remove the fuel pump I guess. I might have to do that. We'll see how we go. But obviously safety first kids. It doesn't need saying. If you're going to be putting some heat on it, don't do it when there's a fuel pump full of fuel next to it. That would be bad. So the premise is quite simple. I have the adapter screwed in to the, uh, the thread down there and then a small slide hammer. And the idea is we are going to just gently, gently, gently. We're just going to do this for a little bit. And then we're going to unscrew it. And then we're going to scrape around the edge. And we're going to put some more um, loose juice around it. And we're just going to keep doing this. I'm not going to do it hard because I do not want to break those threads. And I do not expect this to come out quickly. This is going to be one of these things where we just tease it, tease it, tease it. Go back, some more loose juice, tease it, tease it, tease it, keep going. And after six hours of doing that, nothing will have changed or I will have pulled the threads. I'll be annoyed and we'll have to go on to the second plan, which I have serious doubts is going to work. worked. I was going to swear then, but I try and avoid swearing in my videos. I'm very, very happy with that. Wow, good. So there we go. There she is. I don't need to explain it again, really, do I? But it was an M8 tap. 
um, and then I used this small um, small slide hammer with an M8 adapter. Now the, the, um, the slide hammer with an M8 adapter is a little bit specialist, it's not the sort of thing that everybody has. Um, but there are different ways you can do it. One of the other things is you could actually screw an M8 bolt in there and then use that um, with a slide hammer claw attachment or a bearing puller around a bolt head again. You could have a bolt and a socket. You could have a bolt go in through a big socket with a nut and wind it out in a kind of a, um, in a puller way. But I think the crucial thing here, the most important thing is getting that M8 tap. It's an M8 coarse thread. Um, and that has just saved me having to pull the oil pan and potentially pull the engine. I'll show you the other thing I was going to do um, if it came to it, which I don't think would have worked as well. Stand by. So the other option, and it, it genuinely wouldn't have been as good, I don't think, is to use um, a screw extractor, easy out, whatever you call it. This one here just so happens to fit rather nicely into here. Um, we would have hammered that in and given it a twist and, and kind of the idea there would be just to break it free um, and then we'd have to try and work it out like that. So the reason this was plan B rather than plan A is because it would damage the thread. So what I wanted to do, plan A, was to cut the um, cut a nice thread, as you saw, into the top of the dipstick tube. Um, and we'll go with that and then of course the risk is that you break the thread, you pull the thread because of the corrosion and how hard you're hitting and then we would have gone for the, um, the screw extractor method. Anyway, so that is how you can remove a broken dipstick tube without having to remove the sump or the engine if you're lucky.